gets ready for the arrival of Kulabeli as the player has finally agreed personal terms with us and the final thing we have to do is wait for Napoli to accept the bids we presented for the player. On top of this, we have even more big updates surrounding Rafael Leao as it's official, Todd Bowley has made inquiries over the player's availability. A ton of things to break down and discuss in today's News Daily video. A lot of insight I'll be packing into the story, so you guys definitely stay tuned right to the end. If you like today's video, smash the like button. Let's get 3k likes. And without wasting any more time, I'm going to start things off by discussing Rafael Leal first. And then for the second part of the video, I'll spend more time talking about Kulabali and the latest news. But sticking with Leal... It's official now. Many reports in Italy are suggesting that Todd Bowley has inquired about the availability of Rafael Leal with AC Milan looking, of course, to keep the player, get him to sign a new contract. However, they would be open to selling for bids between 80 to 90 million euros, which makes a lot of sense. Now, there has been some very generic conversations involving Hakim Ziyech. Naturally, with AC Milan wanting to sign the player, only makes sense that we would also hold talks over their top players as well too. Todd Bowley had a meeting with Jorge Mendes like two weeks ago now. Leal is one of Mendes' clients. If you're holding talks with Mendes, you're not talking to Mendes over players like Ronaldo exclusively. You're talking to him for your Matez Nunes's. You're talking to him for your Leals. You're talking to him for many of his top stars and top clients. Right now, Leal's contract does expire in two years' time. And normally when players reach the final two years, this is normally the trigger for clubs to start making moves and start making bids to try and sign these guys because this is the optimum time for them to be sold at a very fair value uh, in regards to the market. But um, AC Milan, of course, are doing the most to try and sign them and get into signs to a new deal. There are some difficulties though. For over six months now, Milan and Mendes haven't come to any agreements over a new contract. It seems like AC Milan's current offer for Leal is around 6 million euros. Uh, they plan to reduce the release clause as his current release clause is set at 150 mil euros. The new one would be around 90 to 100 million euros, which is a lot more realistic. Milan see Leao as their best player. They see him as someone that played the most decisive part in helping them win the Scudetto in the second half of last season. So it only makes sense that they're looking to keep their guy at any cost, but there are only so many limits that Milan have. And the fact is, it seems like the highest they can offer players in terms of a wage is around 6 million euros net. Leao is someone that could command double that money because he is one of the best young talents uh, for his age in the world and has all the potential to be one of the leading attacking players in European football. And that makes sense. With his current deal at this point in time, he's earning around 1.5 million a season. That is absolute peanuts. That's nothing. I'm sure Malang Sar is earning a lot more money per year playing for us over a player like Leal. But I think there's some context and reasoning behind why Leal and Mendes are hoping to, you know, attain a lot more money if there's any plans for him to remain at AC Milan. And I'm thinking hopefully this is where we can have the advantage now to try and entice the player. Now, we have to go all the way back to when Leal was one of the products coming out from the Sporting Lisbon Academy. Controversially, at the time, he reached a mutual agreement to cancel and rescind his contract. One of the reasons behind why was that after Sporting Lisbon back during the 17-18 season, you know, struggled to reach the Champions League. Leal plus other players were attacked and abused. And you're thinking, this is five years ago. The guy was like, what, 17, 18 years old? It's an absolute disgrace that any fan feels any type of entitlement to treat, you know, a teenager and a kid like that. So it only makes all the sense in the world that he's thinking, this is not the environment I'm gonna be at. I don't feel safe here, I wanna go. But here's where the issues come into place. Of course, he signs on a free for Lille. And then after that, Milan signed for around 23 million euros. Now at the time at Lisbon, his release clause was set at around 40 million euros. And when he terminated that contract, Lisbon are like, listen, we've missed out on so much money. It's not right that we aren't commanding anything from him. And this case was taken to the court of arbitration for sport where Leal was told that he has to pay up to 16.5 million euros back to sporting Lisbon. Now, of course, he can still appeal things. Maybe that can reduce the overall value, but it is starting to look like he will have to pay some type of money back to Lisbon, of course, due to leaving on a free. So for me, this explains why finances are very important and the 6 million being offered by Milan per year, that's 6 mil euros. That's like around 4 point something million. He could easily double that contract if he was to leave Milan. Mendes would earn a ton of money from agent fees. And I can't really imagine that Leal would just be so um, willing to commit to AC Milan. Not if we came with a strong offer, not if we really show the player, listen, we want you here for next season. 
I said this in yesterday's video, the options available for 1v1 specialists is not very big in the window right now. It's at a point right now where if you can't sign someone like a Leal right now, then you're not signing anyone of real quality that will boost the team. That's how it is right now. With Milan trying to sign Hakim Ziyech, we know that the current holdup has been the obligation to buy a deal that Milan don't want to do. It just makes sense, surely, no, that if you offer Hakim Ziyech plus, I don't know, 60, 70 mil euros, should that not be enough to get a deal like this done? And my thing is, if you're talking to players like this, you have to be talking to them with hopes of having the actions to follow suit. I don't want to waste time for PR. If we're looking at Leal, there has to be like a real strong confidence that we can sign a player like him and we are very willing to spend the money we have to to sign a genuine top class player. This thing with Delit has not been embarrassing, but it's been disappointing that it, uh, we've kind of lost out on the race so quickly when we were the first ones in it by ourselves. So we have to do more. And for me, I think the reality simply is we aren't as sexy as a brand where players would just outright want to do everything in their power to play for us. You know, we have to pay them more money. We have to entice them. That's the game we have to play, my friends. I mean, look at Kai Havertz. Uh, he wanted to play for Madrid and Bayern Munich over us. If it wasn't for circumstances, we're not getting him. So I'm hoping I see real tangible efforts to sign Leal. And I'm getting a bit of confidence from the fact that someone like Frank Kessy, for example, has left Milan because after, you know, over a year of negotiations for a new contract, they weren't able to find a new deal. Players will leave them. They are capped in terms of salaries they can offer players. Please, let's hope Leal can come in our direction and take this attack to a new level for next season. And right now, we move on to the breaking story of the past 48 hours, and let's talk Koulibaly. It's official right now. Napoli have accepted our 40 million euro bids to sign Koulibaly, who has accepted our terms. That's it, you guys. Koulibaly is literally flying into London now to have his medical completed by tomorrow. He is our second signing alongside Raheem Sterling. Koulibaly is Chelsea's defender for the 22-23 season. Koulibaly himself, of course, has commented on the fact that he is hoping to get a move with us finalised very, very soon. He is open and ready to play for us. We've offered the guy a five-year deal, which is, I think is four years plus the option to extend by a further year. But in terms of the wage packet being offered, uh, it had been circulated around for you know a few weeks prior to these stories even breaking. And that's the fact that he was going to earn around eight to nine million euros net per season, which is a ton of money. Now, for me, when it comes down to the money, yeah, I have to say this. We have the luxury as fans of supporting a club that every single season can win something and can fight for silverware. That means that when we sign players, we're signing them with the bonus that they are helping us win silverware and win trophies. You know, we're not signing players so we can fit them on in the future. We're not Tottenham, you know, we're not teams at that level where we're only looking at players as potential investments because if you're trying to win, you need to sign quality sometimes. And I think Koulibaly in his prime right now, knowing that he can play uh, at the highest level for the next few seasons for a salary of this range, you pay the money if you have the confidence that he is coming in to upgrade your defense and bring immediate quality. I mean, yeah, I understand that on the other hand, there could be issues that come into place, but oh, to be honest with you guys, I don't want to be one of those clubs that's constantly only making decisions based on fear of the future. I, I just think that we've done that so many times in the past and where's that really taken us? Regardless of his age, you know, this guy is still at the highest level and is one of the best defenders in the world. Uh, when Ancelotti was the manager of uh, Napoli at the time, he even was quoted to say that he's one of the best defenders he's worked alongside with. Um, he has a massive reputation there. His form has not dipped, but also he's remained at Serie A. Uh, he's the type of like a colossus that combines strength, Ariel Perez, ability on the board as well too, plus that, 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 that aggressiveness and that presence at the back that you need. Uh, for me, I, I can't help but see him as like a, another version of like a Van Dijk style player because I think him and uh, Van Dijk are quite similar in terms of how they play and what they do in the back. The reality is right now, by next week, when we're seeing our preseason games, we should be seeing Sterling and Koulibaly playing for us as we know that Tuchel wants to secure a defender as soon as possible in time for preseason. The reality is Koulibaly is one of the best defenders in the world. It's only fair that his wages is going to reflect his ability and his worth. It's how this sport works and it's how this sport is always going to work. So I don't really care about his salary and wages. I'm not worried about that. 
I think for me, this is a very astute signing. It made all the sense in the world. I mean, realistically, it's one of the easiest ones to do and you're bringing in immediate quality. So thank God common sense prevailed and we've made a move for him. But that won't be the only move we're looking to make. Now, reports in England are suggesting that we are still in the market to sign like another two centre-backs. One of the next favourite ones will be Nathan Ake. Um, we've agreed personal terms already. The player is down and open. And as I've been alluding to, because for me it's just obvious and it's common sense, Tuchel likes him for the versatility he brings. So he will be that guy who will play down the entirety of the left-hand side. He'll be using the field at times if he has to. And in that sense, I see Ake being our Aspilicueta replacement due to that versatility he brings as wing-back and in the wide centre-back positions. But um, it still seems like we'll sign another centre-back. Kimpembe and Kunde are two of the main favourites right now. I feel like that will be Kunde that gets signed. I mean, we've already agreed times. It makes no sense to, uh, you know, not commit to the full signing of him. But the reality is, if you're in the market to sign three defenders and you already have, like, Thiago Silva here, uh, Trev, for example, what is that really saying for Levi Cole? Now, of course, I'm sure some of you guys are going to roll your eyes, but uh, I've, got to, I've got to say my stuff, man. Some reports are saying that Cole is still deciding his future. Of course, there's a possibility that he could leave on loan or he could leave on a permanent due to the amount of offers coming his way. And it's just like when you get serious offers like this from clubs, it's like, yo, we believe in you. We know you're not going to be with us forever, but come here, level up, and then we'll flip you on in the future. That's what all the Coppin guys are doing. And they're benefiting from getting early exposure straight away that for some reason we won't just offer at our club. Um, I've just never really understood the fear behind using some of the the best talent the club produces. It just, I mean, we, we saw Trevor Chalaber, who's always been a good talent, not one of the very best at the club. And look what he did last season. Uh, for me personally, his season at 22 looks a lot better and stronger than Rudiger was at 24 when we first signed him. Like, what is that really saying about the quality we're able to produce here? And it's just like, surely if you had a future for the player, you allow him to be part of the team. All this nonsense that he's asking for like first three minutes and guarantees, you always see these like fake opinions that come from nowhere, but never involves our own young players. There's no truth behind that whatsoever. For me, it just makes common sense now for him to be integrated into the team, knowing that as time goes on in the next season or two, he can have a greater impact and involvement in the team. I mean, you're learning from flipping Thiago Silva. How is that going to be valuable for your career? You're learning from Koulibaly as well too. I mean, how you not, how's that going to benefit your career? You're learning about the mentality, the culture, the demands, all these things from a young age. But you're one of the best players in the country already. What is this fear? What is the risk in using them when we've already benefited from doing this how many seasons back when the Cobham guys literally secured us Champions League football and not the senior players? It's, it just really baffles me that there's still fear around this right now. And my worry is that, you know, of course it's all hypothetical. I'm still hoping that pre-season comes too because like this guy's staying. Maybe I'm going to relax with getting another centre-back that's not needed. But ideally, if he did leave, I'm praying it's alone. But that's going to require... Cole getting assurances that Tuchel's like, listen, when Thiago Silva goes, you'll replace him. We are ready for you and, you know, stay prepared. And that's the same thing he did with Conor Gallagher. So if it's something like that, listen, I think the fact that Cole was getting consistent minutes week in, week out would be great for us in the long term if we really have a serious plan to create a pathway for him in the team. If not, I feel like we'll risk out again and we'll miss out on another quality guy that will go on level up and realistically we will never be in a position where we will re-sign back all these guys for their buyback options because other rivals and other clubs will sign them up that's the reality in which i see things going down but i'm just really hoping that we make the right decision in place with coral because i think this could have some future ramifications involving other talents coming out from the club now reports in england have suggested that of course todd bowley was bringing a sporting director we've got some names currently michael edwards is a very popular man he had a very good relationship alongside daniel finkelstein one of the board members at the club under todd bowley and they're saying that one of the strategies they're looking to bring in and one of the reasons why someone like a michael edwards has been looked at is because they really want to turn towards youth and really use what the academy has to offer but my thing is by the time this really comes into place in like let's say 12 months time i don't want someone like michael edwards in the club being in a situation where like all our best young players aren't here anymore because that will kind of defeat the point i just think that and the final straw for me would be if cole was sleeve on a permanent because if that was the case then i just have to accept that 
the manager just has preferences for other things in the team right now. So, so currently that is all the latest news that has dropped today. Share your thoughts and opinions. How do you feel about Koulibaly and his imminent, imminent signing? Let us know in the comment section, you guys. And do you want to see Rafael Leal here for next season? I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Line CV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos. Cool.